C. Rogers, thank you very much for accepting this interview. It's it's an honor for me. Oh. I have to say this. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so let's get straight to the, to the matter. Mm -hmm. um, what does conservatism mean? Who is a conservative? Well, uh, my instinct is to, th is to suggest that all normal people are conservatives. Uh, I believe that we have a, a, a natural desire to conserve the things that we love and the things that we're adapted to and the things that we're used to, things that we know how to deal with. And uh, that's all that conservatism is, is transcribing that natural desire into a coherent form of politics. Mm -hmm. And so that when, uh, when one has a political question, instead of um, immediately charging forward to some goal beyond anything we've already known and sweeping reality aside, one hesitates and one looks at what one has and one says, well, this is good, uh, but it needs changing a bit. Mm -hmm. This is good, but it needs adapting. That approach to politics, to me, is natural, and I think it's natural to all human beings because we all know that it's easier to destroy things mm -hmm. than to create them. We are the heirs to extraordinary be benefits, mm -hmm. stability, law, uh, ordinary markets, ordinary homes, families, etc. We don't want to jeopardize those things. Uh, so you mentioned a word that is uh, that seems to be in opposition to conservatism, which is change. Mm. Um, especially, let's say, liberal critics, Marxist critics, yeah. claim that conservatives are op opposed to change, yes. that they abhor change, but that's actually not true. No, it's not true, of course. That? Yeah, I, I mean, Change is part of human nature. We're all changing. We're all advancing towards the ultimate change, which is death. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're t we take provisions in order to postpone that ultimate change. So, and that involves changing things. Uh, and it's absurd. All that the Marxists mean by, by uh, their criticism of conservatism is that, that conservatives don't want radical total change mm -hmm. and they be, be, Marxists believe that only total change is a real change and that's where they are so destructive. Mm -hmm. Total change is actually not a real change in the existing things, it's an abolition of existing things and an opening of the world to chaos. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the motivation behind this suppression of Christianity and our traditional values? Uh, it's a very difficult question this. Uh, um, uh, I believe that that uh, when at a certain point when people become a little tired of inheriting things they suddenly turn round against those things uh, and adopt what I call a culture of repudiation mm -hmm. say that that's not me get take it away uh, um, I want to be free of that burden mm -hmm. uh, and that's a natural instinct in adolescence but when adolescents grow up, they realize that they have to adopt that burden if they're to have children of their own mm -hmm. and if they're to honor their parents and so on. So it tends to go away. But it, in the world in which we live, it doesn't go away so easily because people are too comfortable. They can live with this repudiation. Mm -hmm. they, don't have, they don't need others as much as they used to, mm -hmm. at least not for the time being. So uh, they live in a kind of illusion, a dream of security, which enables them to experiment with throwing everything away. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, they are opening themselves to disaster. And once those, those things are lost, is it possible to recover them? Or you think it's just a, a one way? Well, uh, things do get lost and they do get recovered, mm -hmm. uh, but they get recovered in a different form. Mm -hmm. You know, France in the 1789 lost everything. It lost its entire social order, it lost its law, lost um, all, all the traditional occupations of people, it lost its religion, everything. Uh, and everything was scattered and there was chaos. Two million people lost their lives. but. You know, eventually Napoleon stepped in. Okay, it was a violent way of stepping in, and it wasn't the ideal, but, 
by degrees, it was restored, uh, and 19th century France had law again. It, it had a social structure, it had occupations, it had its religion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, let's not despair. Is it possible to be conservative from a secular perspective? What, what do you think are the difference mm. between secular conservatism and religious conservatism? Well, in, in, in Catholic countries, mm -hmm. conservatism has on the whole been identified with religion, mm -hmm. in particular with obviously with the Catholic Church, but also with a, often with quite s strict and backward looking forms of religion, mm -hmm. as with the ultramontanists in France. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, whereas in Britain, conservatism, which emerged in the 17th, 18th centuries, has always been part of the um, of, of the native uh, scepticism. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, we've been a Christian country, but our kind of Christianity is much more sceptical mm -hmm. than the Roman Catholic kind. It's a mixture of Catholicism and and Protestantism, and it's um, it's not been imposed on the people for the last hundred and fifty years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I think that um, so we we got used to living in another way, and also to separating politics and religion as far as we can. Mm -hmm. Partly because in the 17th century there was so much destruction uh, yes, through religious conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so and and I I believe that actually our model of conservatism is the right one. It's one which separates uh, political conservatism from religious conservatism mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and opens itself to people who are skeptical about religion but simply share the national culture. Mm -hmm. And actually it's, what is interesting is that, that it, it's the English uh, um, language countries mm -hmm. that have been the most uh, likely to declare themselves conservative. We have we have parties which call themselves conservative parties. We have, a, especially in America, a recognized conservative tradition intellectually and culturally. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, whereas in Catholic countries, there isn't such a thing. Yes. Uh, and often it's dismissed as reactionary or something. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, in Spain, there's a traditional stream, uh, let's say a conservative political thought. Yes, uh, in Spain, there, of course, in all countries there is cons a conservative thinking mm -hmm. among ordinary people. Uh, that is, as I say, that's natural. Uh, but in, it is interesting that the attempt to articulate the conservative position in Spain uh, has been undertaken to to, to quite a considerable extent by people who have an admiration for England and the British <laughs> tradition, like Ortega. Yeah, they uh, said, yes. Um, uh -huh. Who was, of course, a parliamentarian in the English mm -hmm. sense, too. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to bring up, to grow up, and let's say, a conservative hemispheric alliance? Yes. Do you think there are things in common that we can think of? I, I think it is possible to have a, such a thing, an alliance of. Uh, conservative forces mm -hmm. across con different countries. Which I think it's part of your scrutopia. Yeah, I, I've always believed in this. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, I grew up anyway in the post-war period where the Atlantic Alliance was fundamental to the survival of Europe mm -hmm. and the survival of European culture in the face of Soviet expansionism. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, the Soviet Union had one positive feature, which is that it, it united us against it. Mm -hmm. We recognized that we were faced with a, a very destructive force and if we did not combine we would be overwhelmed by it. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I think that destructive force is changed but it's still there. It's, it's the kind of, uh, you know, Soviet communism was simply one form of a, a nihilistic uh, response to the world, which is there in all of us, which is a kind of d diabolical thing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which we have to overcome. Uh, and in the political, in the international sphere, I think that means we really must work on having alliances, influencing each other, allowing, of course, the local 
differences, the local variations, mm -hmm. um, because conservatism is about locality. Exactly. It's about what you love, mm -hmm. not about abstract ideas. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, but still, th we should recognize that we, we have shared, there are shared threats and shared achievements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say that both liberal, uh, liberalism and Marxism start from a, an utopia, so it's a deductive kind mm. of thinking, whereas Conservatism is inductive, it's empirically based, it's experience yes. based. Do you think that appreciation is, is accurate or would you no, I think dispute that, it? No, I think that is true, that conservatism, what I, I would put it by saying it's a bottom-up exactly, procedure bottom rather up. than a top-down mm -hmm. procedure. Um, and this of course is reflected, especially in our case, I, uh, and the American case, in our systems of law, mm -hmm. which are not top-down. Then our law is not dictated by Parliament and then imposed on the people. Mm -hmm. It's there in the law courts in, in the case form of case. common law. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then it's Parliament extracts the law from that. So I guess uh, that would put you in a very, very uh, uh, contrasting position with what people in Brussels think. Yes, uh, uh, I mean the the, the um, unhappiness with the European Union uh, of the British people comes at least in part mm -hmm. from the fact that they they don't recognize the validity of Brussels law mm -hmm. because it's law imposed by unelected people yes. uh, um, who don't know the local situation that yeah. they're legislating for. Mm -hmm. Because we have been talking about uh, liberal economics, Marxist yeah. economics. Is, is there anything such as conservative economics? On the whole, uh, historically, Conservatives have um, accepted some version of liberal economics mm -hmm. because uh, on the grounds that are, I think are most articulately expressed by Hayek and mm -hmm. the Austrian school, namely that the knowledge needed uh, for a successful economic interaction between mm -hmm. people is not a knowledge that can be contained in a plan. Mm -hmm. It only exists through free exchange. So if you start interfering too much with free exchange, you destroy the knowledge on which any economy should be based. Mm -hmm. And modern history is a proof of that. Exactly. Uh, the whole history of the Soviet and the Chinese mm -hmm. uh, experience. But um, so to that extent, conservatives, conservatives will all, always or te mostly tend to endorse some form of liberal economics, mm -hmm. but they will also be very adamant that economics isn't everything exactly. and that you can't solve all questions by economic means because not all questions are economic exactly. questions and the most important ones are not economic ones. Like the most important ones like for example? Uh, 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 what institutions do we need in order to pass on to the next generation Families, what we've inherited? Mm -hmm. yeah, the family. Mm -hmm. The family is not an, uh, uh, an answer to an economic question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the answer to a much deeper question, the question of the perpetuation of mankind. Mm -hmm. So, Sir Roger, thank you very much. I'll just a final comment to mm. our Latin American friends and, of course, friends from all over the world that will watch this interview, but especially to Latin America. Any kind of uh, comment, message, just say hello or yes. something. Yes, oh, well, hello to Latin America, <laughs> but I'm glad that Latin America exists because, uh, you know, it's a fantastic... Uh, I don't... I've never visited it, mm -hmm. but uh, it's just... You're most uh, welcome, by uh, the way. Yes, it's a fantastic thought that that great continent with all its wonderful natural resources uh, is speaking European languages uh, mm -hmm. and producing fantastic literature mm -hmm. uh, uh, and music and, uh, you know, uh, and a, a culture that we all recognize and uh, has a, an air of cheerfulness about it yes. despite all its difficulties. Well, thank you very much, Sir Roger. My pleasure. And mine too. Thank you.